and he's got your address. Warriors of the Net. All right, so coming soon is how the internet works. And it's not coming soon like 15 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, I've always had misgivings with that video. I love it. And the, the team at Ericsson, I think, at the time was really pushing the envelope with some graphics work. But it takes some liberties with accuracy, uses some terms that even I haven't heard. Um, but it does actually paint a nice visual picture of some of what goes on underneath the hood in the internet. Right, it can be, it's a pretty abstract concept. So to even just have some idea, even if it's an imperfect one, of, uh, of how the internet works is, is good. And we actually spell a spend a decent amount of time in this lecture on how the internet works and how home networking works. In fact, that's what the, the picture was that was on the screen there. I think that was a sample page from like a, a router's documentation, mm -hmm. I think, online. Um, and it's a nice opportunity, I think, to remind students of like the very topology that they have at home, probably some Wi-Fi reception in their uh, home or apartment or in their dorm room or, or uh, office, and to start to peel back those layers and explain how it works. Uh, have you ever considered um, a PSET that kind of touches on this? So last year we did server, which sort of vaguely touches on HTTP, which is uh, what we're t starting to talk about here. Mm. Uh, but this year we didn't actually have a problem set during this week. This was during the week of our uh, first midterm. Mm -hmm. um, we move things around. I mean, for me, I like the societal relevance here. Um, I think this ties in very well to our new CS50 AP initiative, where it shows the intersection of technology and society. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, the functional role of this material, beyond just being enlightening and I think good for um, every uh, one to know in the real world, is that it really kind of sets the stage for a look at web programming later on. And it allows us to in, uh, broaden the canvas of opportunities uh, for students to program and solve problems on. Now, to programming for the web or for mobile devices and the like. And I think understanding those basic um, implementation details is compelling, especially when we start talking about protocols like HTTP and explaining how HTTP supports cookies. And with cookies, can you get sessions? And so we can continue our discussion of abstraction and layering um, more and more sophisticated uh, functionality on top of of lower level implementation details. Right, this really sets the stage for, for what's to come in the future weeks. Indeed. And I think there's you never have a more uh, attentive audience or student body than when you're talking about things that are so relevant to them and understanding um, how messages are being transmitted from their phone to another phone or through the airwaves in a room and so forth and what kind of threats you expose yourself to by using uh, insecure Wi-Fi or by using a, a weak password. In fact, we'll continue this discussion of security later on when we look at SQL and databases and how you can accidentally render yourself vulnerable. Earlier in the semester, we talked about buffer overflow exploits in the context of C and memory management. So there's a lot of opportunities, I think, to discuss throughout the arc of a CS course, um, some real world security and privacy issues as well. And that just motivates an understanding of this all the more so that even if you are sort of threatened every day in some form technologically, at least you can weigh the risks against the benefits of using these various technologies and decide for yourself as opposed to being ignorant completely to uh, what attacks uh, you might suffer. No, that's a great point. Can you